Uh, Mr. Literer, uh, less than two years ago, this committee held a hearing on renewable fuels. Mm -hmm. At that time, we learned about the small business boom in ethanol and biodiesel production. We also learned about the rural rejuvenation taking place as a result of that boom. Clearly, the picture has changed dramatically. What will it take for small producers to overcome these challenges? And do you believe that the recent buildup in capacity was too rapid? Well, first of all, I think uh, we have to recognize that right now the most limiting factor to small producers is access to capital. Uh, that is an overriding issue, and it's not just this uh, industry, it's a lot of industries in our country. And so, uh, you know, if we could get that, uh, that problem fixed, I think that would help a lot of producers. The other, the other uh, part of that is the pricing uh, between uh, gasoline and ethanol. If that would change, that would dramatically change the, the outcome for ethanol producers. As far as the uh, buildup of capacity, um, you know, uh, I don't think any of us had a crystal ball to see what was going to happen with our economy. Uh, you know, there's no question we were trying to meet a demand for phasing out MTBE. Uh, we met the challenges. We expanded. Uh, we believe uh, we have uh, a product that uh, needs to be here long term for replacing uh, imported uh, crude oil. And, uh, you know, I, I think if we all had a crystal ball, maybe we would have done some things differently. But, but looking at it at the time, uh, we think we did the right thing. And I think the industry uh, can rebound from this if we can get our uh, credit situation solved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Faraci, I know that your board has been supportive of uh, the renewable fuel standard, too. Uh, can you, and, and we all know that uh, they are uh, still in its regulatory phase, but we, um, and, and the good thing about it is that it will recognize uh, biodiesel uh, fuel for the first time. Um, in the context of the recession, what will be uh, the proper implementation of Addis F2? What will that mean for your industry? Uh, th thanks for the question. Uh, the renewable fuel standard, uh, the proper implementation of this, to have a program that's going to be work workable is absolutely vital to our industry. Um, it, it really could be a make or break for us right now, and given the way things are out in the economy and, and the way the market conditions are. Um, RFS2, the thing about it that was, so, one, from the, our industry's perspective, that was so groundbreaking is for the first time you have a renewable requirement in U.S. diesel fuel mm -hmm. that you didn't have before, and it's a component of the advanced biofuel schedule, and you ramp up from 500 million gallons in 2009 to a billion gallons in 2012. And one of the requirements of that fuel is that fuel to qualify for that component of the program, it has to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50 percent. Now, we have well-founded data that's over a decade old and has been refined consistently that shows when you look at direct emissions associated with biodiesel, you get a 78 percent reduction. Um, what our concern is right now is that the entire advanced biofuel schedule, the first component of it to roll out, which is this biomass-based diesel component, could be in jeopardy if um, the EPA doesn't implement this in a correct way. Um, what we're concerned about is that due to some of the, the additions that they're throwing in with the calculation of greenhouse gas emissions, you could have the effect of essentially disqualifying all vegetable oil from being used as a feedstock to meet what is the very first component of the biomass-based diesel schedule. And if you do that, just quite frankly, you simply don't have the feedstock to meet the program, and the first component of the advanced biofuel schedule that rolls out is a failure. So it's imperative to us that this be done correctly. Do, do you have an idea as to when EPA's uh, will implement it? Uh, well, by statute, they were supposed to have a final rule in place by January 1 of this year. Now, they clearly haven't done that. Um, you know, based on conversations, we assume that we're going to see the NOPER here, you know, maybe within the next couple weeks. Um, and we certainly want to see that process move forward um, because getting a program up and running and that's workable is absolutely vital to us. Um, but it's got to be done in the correct way. Okay. 